red version of the Angus uh, is essentially we, we saw the reset, those cattle that carried the uh, two recessive uh, red genes, they are red, very similar characteristics other than their color pattern. Uh, they are solid red and polled just like the Angus with some variation in the red there. Uh, the current Red Angus Association was formed in 1954 and essentially began to select cattle that were red in the Angus herds and they formed their own breed association, but another very popular breed as well. Just wanted to show you some of the variation in this slide in size and type of kind. You've seen some of those old pictures of those cattle. Uh, a lot of times we think of the, the cattle back in the day as being all small, moderate, like that top right picture there. But that was in like the 40s and 50s. Uh, cattle before that time were very large frames. You can see those Hereford bulls there. Uh, that would have been in the uh, 1800s there. Uh, so cattle were big. We moved into that kind of that fat stock uh, era where cattle were very fat, more moderate in their frame. And then we began to see in the 70s health patterns change in, and uh, the uh, desires of the U.S. consumers began to change where they didn't want as much fat because of the, the guidelines that were coming out. And so they wanted that product to be trimmed more. And they were buying more of that product at the retail and grocery store level. And so those butchers in those, the, the major grocery stores were having to trim that product. So we began to see a trend where they didn't want as, as fat a cattle, but they wanted more muscle in those cattle. And so we saw the time of the importation of the continental breeds, which we'll talk about. And so that bottom left would be one of our continental breeds of cattle back in the late 80s. And you could see how big those cattle were uh, during that time. And then we began to see a shift begin in the early 90s where those cattle began to moderate their size some, but they continue to get more muscling and deeper bodied cattle. And so really we didn't change the weight of those cattle, we just changed the frame size. And so that bottom right picture there, you can see that female, uh, she's heavy, she's got a lot of weight to her, uh, but she's not as tall. And so you can see our genetic trends over time where we, we've, we've seen cattle get heavier muscled, bigger bodied, heavier weights, and that's reflected in the carcass weight increase that we talked about in, in a previous lecture. Our next breed group we'll talk about is very important in Texas, but also in the South, is their Ball Syndicus breed group. And these cattle are very high in heat tolerance, they're resistant to pests, external parasites, as well as internal parasites. They're a little later maturing, which is a negative, and they're lower in their marbling on average. Again, when we're talking about these breed types, we're talking about on average, because there can be Angus uh, or shorthorn cattle that are grade standard, but then there also can be those, the greater proportion are going to be on higher marbling type animals and higher grading. Same thing in the Ball Syndicus group. Uh, we see uh, purebred Brahmin, uh, purebred Ball Syndicus type animals that can grade prime. Uh, but again, those are the, the extremes of it. And uh, these breeds have really worked hard uh, in the last 20 years to continue to improve the marbling in those cattle without sacrificing the traits that those animals are known for uh, as well. Uh, so as you can see, the straight Ball Syndicus cattle here, here's some cattle that uh, were imported from India in 1905. The uh, current American Brahmin, which is a combination of several Ball Syndicus breeds there, as you can see, the, either the gray or the red version. Uh, Nalore is another popular Ball Syndicus, or fairly popular Ball Syndicus breed in the U.S., or I should say it's the second most popular Ball Syndicus breed because Brahmin would be the number one by far and then we've got a few of the Nalore cattle that are out there uh, as well. Nalore very similar in their their look uh, as the Brahmin there. Uh, the American breed groups, what we term them, are going to be our breeds that are high in heat tolerance and they're going to be a combination of our Ball Taurus breed and a Ball Syndicus breed and predominantly it's going to be Brahmin with the American breed types that we talk about. And so they're intermediate between Boss Taurus and Boss Syndicus in their traits. And so they crossed them because they wanted to do the early maturing maternal aspects of some of our Boss Taurus breeds to place them with our heat tolerant animals of the Boss Syndicus and try to offset maybe some of the lower marbling in the Boss Syndicus, but also uh, some of the um, uh, lower marbling as well as later maturing, and they put them together. 
And we'll talk about breed complementarity uh, and heterosis and hybrid biggers as well. So these breeds, uh, the Santa Gertrudis breed, which uh, was developed on the King Ranch down in South Texas, and uh, it's a combination of Shorthorn and Brahmin, 5 8 Shorthorn, 3 8 Brahmin, and the composite breed that was developed at the time. And um, as you can see, those cattle can be horned or polled. Uh, they are solid red. I think it's interesting as you look back in history and, and, and the development of the Santa Gertrudis breed, they really saw the need for solid colored pattern cattle. So they selected those animals, those shorthorn genetics, that would give them that solid red pattern without all the spots and color. And as you fast forward to current day and you look at current market conditions, uh, we want cattle that are solid in their color pattern. So they're solid red or grays or blacks uh, because they look and appear more uniform in their type and kind. So I think it's interesting that even way back in the development of the Santa Gertrudis, uh, they kind of had the foresight of, of what maybe could be in the future there. Uh, the Brahmin, or the uh, Beefmaster, is a uh, cross, is a half Brahmin, 25% Shorthorn, and 25% Hereford uh, in their breeding. And they're another composite breed, and uh, they're again very adapted to the uh, southern climates. Uh, this particular breed has made a lot of progress over the years. They, they had a lot of spotted, spotted cattle, a lot of uh, wild colors, I should say, and that some of that was coming from the Shorthorn, some of it was coming from the Hereford. And this breed has really uh, made a lot of progress. Uh, this breed can be either red or black, predominantly red now. And uh, as you can see in those pictures there, the female and the bull, uh, this breed has gotten real progressive uh, in beginning in the 2000s, early 2000s, to begin to try to move to a solid pattern, solid red type animal to try to match up with today's market conditions. Uh, the Brangus is a 5 8 Angus, 3 8 Brahmin, and uh, as you can see these cattle are polled uh, and uh, they're predominantly black hided. They too can have a little bit of white there and it's taking advantage of the, the maternal high marbling Angus and putting it with that, that adaptability of the Brahmin. Uh, the Brayford, a lot of times when we think of Brayford we think of a half blood. Uh, first cross between a Brahmin and Hereford here in Texas and in the south. But we also think of the Brayford as a, it is a composite breed as well. Uh, and, uh, and it's popular in the, the southeast. And uh, it is 5 8 uh, Hereford and 3 8 Brahmin. And you can see those cattle have that Brahmin look, but they also have that white face uh, in white underline, as you can see in the Hereford cat pattern there. Uh, they can be horned or polled as well. The Red Angus, just the red version of uh, the uh, Brangus type or the red Brangus is, and you can see those cattle are red, uh, polled, and they're going to be 5 8 uh, red Angus and 3 8 Brahmin there. Uh, our Simbra is really one of our more popular uh, continental back on uh, our continental boss, uh, boss Taurus with our Brahmin or Boss Indicus breed. Uh, there were the Charbray uh, and some others with our continental breeds, but the Simbra is really the one that um, is the most popular still uh, American breed and the most common out there. And these cattle are going to be a little leaner, heavier muscled. They're going to be a higher milking, but they're going to be 5 8 uh, Simmental, 3 8 Brahmin, and most of them are going to be red or black today.